Thanks for staying with us today, all of you. Hope you're enjoying the topic so far. Uh, let me just set up my screen a little bit better. Give me one second. Yeah, 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 sure. So next 20 minutes, we will focus on AWS Well-Architected Framework. And by the way, I'm Sanjay Agarwal. I'm a senior solution architect at AWS. I have 20 plus year experience in development and application architecture design. So today I will talk about the application you're designing in the cloud or migrating to the cloud. And I will cover a lot of information about AWS recommendations and the best practices for doing a good design in cloud. And even before that, what are these best practices and where do I find them? I will cover all of it. Uh, another thing I will touch on is the AWS tool, which is available to you for free to use. Uh, this tool is to guide you through validating your application design against AWS recommendations. And when I say AWS recommendations, these are the set of best practices that AWS has developed over a decade by designing thousands of workload uh, for our customers. So let's get started. By the way, I will give this uh, link to the tools and all these things in the chat window or question answer window, whatever suits uh, this thing after the code, right, right after this session, yeah. So whatever your responsibility in an organization is, all the people in the call I'm calling out. So whether you are responsible for business or finance or operation or, or you are a security engineer, whatever your persona is, first thing I want to do is take a moment and think about your application, your workload, which is in cloud or in hybrid cloud, whatever the situation is, are you well architected? Do you know if you're using the best architectural practice in cloud? And that is really what we are trying to help customer answer. When we ask our customer these questions, uh, you will be a little surprised to hear when we ask our customer, most customer, uh, they indeed say, well, we have the best engineer in the team, but but we do not know. Uh, and, and things become even more challenging when we start to dive a little deeper and assess, are you really covering all the domains, for example, around the six pillars? And I will go through all the six pillars a little later in the presentations. And often the answer changed and answer became a clear no. They might have taken care of some areas very well while there are areas which they might have not considered as well as they should have. So for us, the objective here is to cover this holistically or more in quantifiable way. So think of it, uh, think of it, what if you have given a mechanism which help you quantifiably identify the area of, area of improvement in your architecture and also provide you a clear recommendation and the guideline to address the identified issue with the proven methods. How cool will that be? So the framework which I will discuss today is designed to do exactly that. So when you review your application with the, with the mechanism of the framework, it produces a report which you can download as in a PDF format or, or look at on the AWS console itself. And it will list all the findings and the recommendations to address that findings. And what kind of findings, uh, for example, Issues like uh, ensuring that you rightly provisioning your infra and cloud and taking the advantage of elasticity, which AWS cloud has to offer. Uh, other example may be related to operations. When you develop your application in cloud, there are so many operational related things architects need to take care in design. Or finding maybe straightforward like have you taken care of security properly in your application design i'm not i'm not saying the security is a straightforward thing but but uh, it is more about like have you taken care of that properly so if you are a business personnel or operational team or finance team if you want to talk to your architect what questions you will be asking them right so all these things are covered in this tool um so with that let's so, so what is the AWS Well Architected Framework? Let's let's look at it into a little bit more detail, right? So, the AWS Well Architected Framework is simply a design principle and architectural best practices for architects and business personnel who are planning on running their application in the cloud. As simple as that. But, but one thing I will say, 
we can have all the tools or guidelines given to us, but we cannot do a good job or we cannot do a justification to the topic unless we understand what are the real value proposition, what are we trying to do for customer and why? Uh, and you may be the customer itself, right? For your own organization. So if we look at that, what our customer is most worried about first, if we understand that first, what let's say you are moving the application to cloud, what is the most worrisome part of, for you? So we collected some intel there, some input there, and I would like to share that first. The common pain point, uh, what customer have when they are migrating to cloud or what they're worried about when they're moving to cloud, right? And the number one comes out to be security concern. Customer want to ensure when they migrate their application to cloud, they are equally secure as they are in the in on-prem. Because when they are on-prem, it may be financial industry, the banking or healthcare or whatnot. When they are in their own boundary the, and managing their own firewall and all, uh, they are they feel more confident, right? But when they, they move to cloud, a sense of concern, or rather I should say, they need assurance from architects that their workload will be equally secure in cloud. So that is the number one concern uh, we come up with when we talk to our customers or work with our customer. Second one in the list is more of a mindset, I will say. Um, customer is moving from CapEx model to OPEX model. Uh, the, the hidden expense part, right? So you are adding a variability. You are adding a variability part to the cost. And it is really uh, an architect job to ensure that they are using the resources and the infra in the cloud effectively and in the most optimum way. So this is the second most concern I call out always. And the third one is uh, customer want to ensure continuity of their business and absolutely no disruption. And this is understood obviously because this is revenue related. Uh, they want to ensure continuity of the business even if the data center hit a disaster. Uh, and by the way, this particular point, you do much better in cloud than on-prem to begin with. But, but this is a concern which uh, kind of surface out uh, in some of the enterprise applications. And last thing which I highlight here is scalability and the elasticity. This is another consideration while moving to cloud. Customer want that they should be able to scale their workload as they go. Like kind of elasticity, right? Without any re-architecture. They should be able to add more server or delete more server, all these things. But this is one of the biggest thing in fact customer expect when they migrate to cloud, but often get disappointed. Often get disappointed because of incorrect architectural practices. So this is where AWS well architected guidelines and resources come handy. Uh, like this is, these are the concerns which get handled if you do really look at these guidelines. So let's dive a little deep on that. What are these, right? So when we and keep uh, keep putting your question in the question answer window, I will make sure I address them when I when I'm done with this presentation. So I will be happy to answer your questions here. So when we talk about AWS Well Architected Framework, it contains three or four. It contains four things actually. First thing is the pillars. Uh, this is really a six pillars which I will go through in detail because each pillar is focused on a specific area. But then corresponding to each pillar, there are questions. And questions are really a mechanism to capture data about your application around these pillars. What that mean by the way? It is more about if you are a business personnel or operational person or so what kind of questions you will be asking your architects or when you're doing a review of your own workload, what kind of things you will be considering? That is the set of questions I'm referring to. That is one per pillar, uh, not one per pillar. Each pillar has its own area. And then we have a design principle. These are the mental model, really. These are the mental model to help you think about how to design and implement your application. And finally, the best practices. This is our bread and butter here for today's discussion. Uh, corresponding to each question, there are best practices. And these are the best practices which I just refer, right? Which AWS has developed over a decade by designing thousands of workloads for our customer. And this is the really main value add, right? So I would like to really dive deep onto the pillar part, and then we will see how, what kind of questions we are talking about and how it really address the customer problems. So when we say pillar, they are designed to take care of 
different domain of your application. For example, operation excellence. The operation excellence pillar provides the guidelines which help in delivering business values. So uh, take an example, when we review application in cloud, very often what we find is application architecture is very good. Not a problem, it provides a functionality what it's supposed to be. But generally, what we find often is that architect completely ignorant of operational points like how to how to understand and monitor the health of your workload or health of your operations how to reduce defects and improve defect handling all these points get missed out and that is the kind of recommendations and the guidelines you missed out that's fine but how do you fix that that guidelines is the one which comes and get addressed into this pillar a second pillar here is security. You may have a good secure design. In fact, if I evaluate 100 different architectural designs, 90 have fairly good security coverage. But what they fail to address is how to detect and investigate security breaches. You may have a all great security related nuance taken care, that's fine. But still, if, if a security breach happens, how do you monitor it? How do you notify it to the right people? And how do you contain the blast radius automatic, right? So often we find that many solutions do not consider that very, very well. And not only that, how do you classify your data? Uh, how do you protect your data, right? That also a part of a separate branch of security or security personnel in this call today will agree with me that one size does not fit all when it comes to addressing security. So if you do not classify your data properly, you cannot put a good uh, security architecture. So all the guidelines and the governance and uh, findings which are covered are in this pillar. Uh, next domain we talk about is the reliability and the reliability pillar ensure that application remain up and running even if the data center hit a snag and these recommendations are towards disaster recovery network topology data backup and and not only that how do you test it right because this is one interesting part right how do you test your uh, disasters uh, simulations, right? And ne network topology, right? How do you divert your traffic? If a half of your application goes down, then how do you divert your traffic to the right place? All these things which your architect generally I see get missed out and these recommendations help to address that particular area. Uh, next two pillars, the performance efficiency and the cost optimization, this kind of get, goes hands in hand by the way they go together pretty much. The performance efficiency pillar includes the ability to use resources. For example, compute, memory, network, database, all these kind of resources which we generally talk about right in the cloud. Efficiency of that and the cost optimization covers how do you govern cloud usage, right? How do you monitor usage and usage and the cost in the cloud? Unless you do that, you cannot say you are cost optimized. So these are the recommendations and guidance and governance, which kind of ensure you are using the real resources most optimum way. Uh, and, and we see often get missed out in the architecture. And I will find a lot of resources to you actually today in this call, which you can read and refer as well. And, and the last pillar is an interesting one. I would like to little bit uh, go a little bit more detail here, sustainability. Uh, this is one of the new pillar we got added. Uh, um, so by the way, I, if you join the reInvent this year, there was a lot of focus this year over sustainability and environmental impact uh, by many, many organizations in the reInvent. So many enterprises set a goal for themselves or even a government mandate in some countries uh, that lead to these discussions. So guideline in this pillar will help you find like what is the carbon footprint your application has and what can be done to reduce that. For example, if uh, it will guide you on how to take advantage of user behavior pattern to support your sustainability goal. What that mean? Like you may have application which based on the AI ML, you can find out the most peak time and the least peak time. And then you can do, use elasticity to shrink your footprint based on the traffic and by doing that what exactly you are doing you are conserving energy you are making an impact on the carbon footprint 
and there is a very well defined calculator you can even calculate in how much gram and how much kilos of carbon footprint you are reducing so these pillars in association with the design principles and the best practices give you a complete end to end report card of your application and by the way you can run this uh, review during any phase of your development life cycle or even when application is already in production so uh, i talked about the principle how we all these things let's let's look at the tool how it look like right uh, i'm not going to give a demo to the tool but what i will do is i will paste this link which you can try yourself so you can access this tool after logging into your aws console and uh, uh, and so once you get this tool it guide you through step by step to perform the review of your application basically and it's free to use tool and once you're done you get a report detailing all of the issues and not only reporting all of the issues it also categorizes high medium and low cat uh, severity along with it it also put a recommendation right in the documentation how do you fix them what are the best practices right so a clear guidance how to fix them so i will give you that tools if you haven't used that in the past uh, this will be a good thing to go for uh, there is one more thing i would like to highlight if your application serving a specific industry for example if your application is related to iot or data analytics or financial services sap you can zoom further and evaluate your application against the vertical specific nuances and we call them lenses basically these are the additional guidelines and recommendation is specific to the industry or technology domain think of it like add ons right these are like add ons if your workload is sap related yes you have done the review based on the tool but now you want to have few additional questions few additional things to take care and that is where the lens come into play you can kick in that lens and then you can you can look into the details more uh, detail yeah uh on top of that if you are further interested to learn more there are a lot of resources available to you so we have a documentation uh, again i will give you the link uh, in the chat window so we have a documentation which can be referred and you can download as a pdf and read like a book or you can browse through the link and then learn about the best practices for individual area with the five or six pillar i talk about they all are covered here very very details um, what, and then the best practices obviously as well if you want to try this hands on like make your hands dirty try want to try it hands on then uh, there is a lab setting available where this is again free to use you can you can try yourself this is a step by step instructions for a lab uh, actually this is a not one lab it's a combination of lab really from introductory level to expert level covering all the pillars let's say you are interested in a particular pillar a particular domain or particular area of your Uh, expertise there are a couple of labs in your you will find at least one or two labs one in the introductory to the expert level and this lab is again free to use and i will post a link as well so with that uh, i hope uh, if you are hearing it first time i would like to hear if you are hearing it this tools or the instructions or recommendations the best practices first time then definitely you might have learned something but i will be happy to answer any question you may have at this point